In Creo Parametric, I want to do some cabling in my drone assembly. So let's open up one of my cabling sub-assemblies. And you can see that I've got my skeleton model with a bunch of reference geometry. I've already created a couple of harness parts. Now let's create our spools. To do that, I'll go to Applications and then Cabling. And in the middle of the ribbon, we have the spools command. Be aware there is a drop down. In Creo Parametric 5.0, they added the capability to do striped cables. But I'm going to click on the spools command. And here I have the menu manager. And I don't have any spools in my model. I could read them from disk, or as I'll do in this video, I'm going to create a few different spools. And when I click the create button, I've got a choice of four different kinds of spools that I can create. I'll start off with wires for individual conductors. Later on in another video, I will create a spool for cables, which will have multiple conductors. You can also create spools for sheathing, which can represent bundling that you use to take a bunch of different wires and cables and put them together. And also you can do ribbon cables. But I'm going to choose wire. And now I get prompted to enter a name for the spool. And I'm used to using the American wire gauge, so I can call things AWG. Or maybe you want to use information from your supplier for the name. Or maybe if I'm using the mil spec for 22759 wire, I could use that. But for simplicity, let's just call it, and I like to use capitals, AWG. And the weird thing about American wire gauge is that the higher, excuse me, the lower the number that you have, the bigger the diameter. So it's kind of counterintuitive. And I'm going to start off, let's start off with some 12 gauge wire. And I'm going to name it black because it's going to be a black color. And so I'll hit the enter key and then you'll get the electrical parameters dialog box. And inside of here, I have a few different columns. By default, you'll get a name column and then you have type in here, minimum bend radius, thickness, units and colors. I have another column in here added for my mass units because I'm going to use that later on. And I'm going to add in some other different columns in here. If you go to the view drop down menu, you can choose columns. Here's where I have mass units and maybe I want to reorder them. I usually like to have my color a little higher in there. And we have a bunch of other different parameters that we can add as columns. For example, maybe I want to have what? Oops, hit the wrong button. Uh, let's hit the add button for where are you wire gauge? There's wire gauge. Let's put that in there and move it up. And I like to have it after that. Let me find that color. Here's the color. I'm going to add that in here. And also color code. And so the difference between these two is for the color, if this is the name of a color that you actually have an appearance for, it'll use that to apply the color to it. But maybe you want to use a different name for the color code and I'll talk about color codes in a moment uh, and let's see another one that I like to have in here is the density let's add that and be aware that the density is not going to be the mass per unit volume this is a linear density it's going to be the mass per unit length and it takes in the units and the mass units for figuring out how it's going to calculate that, what your numbers are going to be reported in. And let's see, uh, just checking a little, anything else I want to add in here. Number of conductors does not make sense for a single wire spool, but if you're doing a cable spool, you would use that. And you can see I have some of the other different choices that you have in here. And again, I'm going to rearrange the order of my columns in the way that I like them to be. And so far, yeah, this is this is pretty good. So I'll click the OK button and let's take the dialog box and make it a little wider so I can see everything and start filling in the various information. All right, so first off, this is 12 gauge wire. So let's plug in our value of 12 in here. Now I'm going to go to the thickness and my units are in millimeters. And let's see the diameter for this one. The thickness is going to be 4.24 hit the enter key now the minimum bend radius this is pretty interesting so 
people use different values for the minimum bend radius and sometimes some people use two times the thickness some people use four some use six sometimes eight it really depends on the kind of wire that you're getting and i'd mentioned if you use the mill detail 22759 wire uh, there are different slash numbers that represent the different properties for example uh, the temperature rating the voltage and one of them is the flexibility so if you're using a more flexible wire then you would need a lower minimum bend radius in this case over here let's say i want to use a factor of four times the minimum bend radius which again can be kind of high i can plug in 16.96 just doing the math in my head and this minimum bend radius is what creo parametric is going to use later on when it's routing the wires and cables it's not going to allow your wires and cables to violate this minimum bend radius and just another little anecdote i had some wires and i didn't know what i should use for the minimum bend radius i called up the supplier and said hey what's your minimum bend radius and their question was What's a minimum bend radius? So again, that's why sometimes people just come up with a factor that they are comfortable with. All right, let's see for my color in here. Again, if you have an appearance with this color, Creo Parametric will use that. And so I happen to know that one of my appearances is called Pantone Black. And I'll hit the Enter key. All right, now let's take a look at the color code. So again, I've got this color that I've used, Pantone Black, but I don't want that to appear in any tables like a spool bill of materials. So I can type in a different name. I could type in the word black, or I could use an abbreviation like BLK. And I'm gonna switch over to show you uh, some different common codes that I've seen for colors used. So here in the U.S., we have a mill standard 681F that gives different identification numbers for colors of wires that you're supposed to use. And also, I've seen these common three-letter abbreviations for the different colors. So you can see there, black is BLK, orange, ORN. We've got violet, VIO. And there are other colors than these available for wires. So for example, I've also seen tan color there's also pink color so you can have more than just these 10 colors that we have here but this is one source of information that you might want to use for setting up the different colors of your spools okay back over to creo parametric before i enter in the density i'm going to establish my mass units and this is if I click on here, I can go to the drop down list and we have a variety of different units in here. And I'm going to use grams. So grams per millimeter uh, length is going to be for my density. And for this, for the values I looked up, this is going to correspond to for 12 AWG 0 0.0513. And that way, I'll, it'll be able to use this for calculating the weight of my wires if I include my wires and cables in my mass property calculations. So this is good for my first one. I'm going to click the OK button. And that way I have my first wire created. Let me turn on my highlighting. And you can see now that we have one wire created, we have a bunch more in commands available to us. For example, if I go to the list, here we get this dialog box that shows that right now I have one spool that's called AWG 12 black for a wire and I can click the close button. And if I want to edit a color, it'll list all the different ones in here. Right now I only have one, so it's only got one listed in there. So to make this make more sense, I'm going to create another wire real quick. Let's click the create button and choose wire. And this one will be AWG, let's use nice big wire, eight. And let's say that this is going to be a red color. And then like before, I'll enter in my various information. So for example, for my mass units, let's change that to grams. And my density for this one is going to be a value of 0.125 in my set of units. Let's see, for my color, I happen to know that in my computer, pan, uh, on my setup, I've got a Pantone 185, which is a nice red color that I want to use. 
And for the color code, let's type in RED. So I can use that report in my, spill, my bomb uh, bills of material for my harness spools. And lastly, for the thickness, this is going to be 6.48. And for my minimum bend radius, let's use a value of, say, 25.92. Pretty big number there, almost an inch. All right, or over an inch. So that's good for this one. Oh yeah, for my wire gauge, forgot to fill that one in. That's gonna be a value of eight, and then I can click the OK button. And now if I want to go edit my different spools, right now I just have red selected. I can select all and click the OK button. And now I've got the electrical parameters dialog box with both of these in here, and I can edit these. And maybe I say, oh, this minimum bend radius is too big. Maybe I wanna use a factor of 2x instead of that. And after you change the colors, or excuse me, change the parameter values, you could click the OK button, but I haven't changed anything. Let's hit the cancel out of here. Now, one of the most important steps is that I want to be able to use these spools later on in other different harnesses. So I'm going to write them out to disk. And I'll choose the right command. And then here we have our AWG8 red. Let me click the OK button. And that's been written, and it's been written out to my current working directory let's hit the right button again and then i'm going to write out the other spool and click the ok button and hit done return and now i can use my computer let's go to here and i've got a folder that i want to use for these different colors and i see that it's they are going to be written out here. And these are .spl files. Those are text files, and it uses the .spl extension. I'm just going to take these and move them to the folder where I want to store my different spools. Let's paste them in here. And so now, it's interesting that things that this is a shockwave flash object. Uh, now I'm going to set a config.pro option to point to that folder. Let's go to File, and then Options, Configuration Editor, and I'm gonna click the Find button. I happen to know that's called Pro Spool DIR, but if you don't know the name of the config option, you can type in the keyword, and here we have the value. I'm gonna click the Browse button and change this to the correct folder. C, Creo, Cabling, Spools. Click OK, Add Change. And now if I scroll down in my list of config.pro options, here we can see that we have the value set. It's got the lightning symbol, and the lightning symbol means that this is supposed to take place immediately. If you have options with computer symbol on it, that means that a restart is required. So let me export this out to make sure that it's going to use this option every time that I fire up Creo Parametric. If you take a look at the model tree, here we have our spools, and they're created as assembly level features. Be aware that they are not created as features inside of your harness part. Again, they're assembly level features. And those are used to consolidate and capture the total length of those different wires of that particular spool in your harness. So that's good, let's click the close button. And to get out of cabling mode, I can close this one to go back to my main assembly. And there we can see them in there. And let's go to another one of the cabling assemblies that I created. Just because I created those spools in one particular harness doesn't bring them over to all my different harness assemblies. So let's go into application cabling. Again, I don't have any spools in here. So I can go to the spools command and then click the read button, and here are the different spools, and I believe you should be able to actually select multiple different ones and click OK. Yeah, I just used the control key to select those. Now I have those spools available for use in this particular harness. Now one thing to be aware, if you are using logical referencing, in other words, you are creating a schematic in Creo Schematics and then exporting an XML file and then reading them into Creo Parametric, that will create your spools automatically for you. So uh, when you uh, do that logical data uh, information, where do we, oh yeah, here's the important one for logical data if you're bringing in that XML file. 
Uh, so you won't need to populate your assemblies with spools. It'll come over as logical data. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindshield.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.